Sometimes custom PC builds are all about the pure performance value, and sometimes they're all about the aesthetics. Today's build is both. Today, I'll be walking you through all the parts inside of here so you can copy it for yourself. You better believe I brought it home with me for a few days to daily drive it and land the headshots, and we also extensively benchmarked it to see what it's truly capable of. This build is using, honestly, one of the very best CPU and GPU combinations that's possible right now in terms of FPS per dollar value, and it's also using some aesthetic parts that you most likely have never seen before. I'm actually gonna go build this PC with my buddy Brett over on the UFD Tech live stream. so before we do that, let's do a quick rundown of all the parts that I chose. Starting with the CPU, I'm targeting some sneaky value with the Ryzen 7 7700X. At 250 bucks, this is very solid and a much more affordable option for those higher end gaming PCs if you can't snag a 7800X 3D. And here's some of the other reasons I went with it as well. For cooling the 7700X, I'm going with this Asia Horse W360 AIO and there's a good chance that you've never seen this before. I've been a big fan of Asia Horse for several years now, mainly because of their cable extensions, and they actually sent me a few of their newer parts to check out, so that's exactly what I'm doing. Don't worry, they didn't pay me, so I can still say whatever I want. This AIO looks super clean and actually comes in a reasonable price point, and I'll be linking this as well as every other part that I'm talking about for this build down in the description. What's also down in the description is our video sponsor, GVG Mall. I know you've heard me say this a bunch of times already, but the reason GVG Mall keeps sponsoring these videos is because a bunch of you guys and I keep buying their keys. It's plain and simple. They have the best prices on Microsoft Office keys, other software, games, and even some console stuff as well. More importantly though, is that they have the gold mine for cheap Windows activation keys and the process couldn't be any easier. Now, these prices on their website look great already, but the true magic is when you use code ZTT18 because that'll give you a beefy 25% discount. They'll then instantly send you the key, you paste that into your Windows activation setting, and then boom, you get full access to Windows, you remove that nasty watermark, and you'll get every update that's available. I wouldn't be showing this to you if it didn't work, so head on down in the description and use code ZTT18 if you need to pick up a key for way cheaper than the normal price. But now let's get back to this build. And next up we have the motherboard, which is the ASRock B650M Pro RS Wi-Fi. To be very honest with you, this was mainly chosen by aesthetics to match our all weight build today, but there are a few other reasons why this is a pretty solid choice. Next up is the RAM, and this is the Silicone Power Zenith Gaming 2x16 gigabyte DDR5 kit clocked at 6,000 megahertz. Any RAM kit with these specs will work. Just look for one with the CL rating as low as possible and one with an aesthetic that matches your build if you care about that kind of thing. For the SSD, we have the Team Group MP44L 1TB NVMe. This is a mid-level NVMe Gen 4 drive, so a bit better than the budget options. For the power supply, I got the MSI Mag A650GL. This is packing 650 watts of power in this tier B unit, which is definitely good enough for me. Now, before we get into the graphics card, which honestly I'm in love with for both the performance and aesthetics, let's check out the other products that Asia Horse sent us. Of course, we got some white cable extensions. I would have bought those for this build whether they sent them or not. But for the case, here we have the Peg Pegasus White Mid Tower. I never saw this before until it arrived to the studio, but I have to admit, it's a pretty cool design. It's micro ATX, which helps keeps our costs down. The case itself is affordable too, and I'm always a fan of this dual chamber design. It's got room for all sorts of fan, AIO, and storage configurations. The only unfortunate thing is that it doesn't come with ARGB fans. This is actually where we had an issue during the PC building live stream with Brett, and even once when we brought it back to the studio. To fill out the case with fans, I picked up this five pack of these Asia Horse 120 mil ARGB fans, and that was definitely not a good combination with this case. To be fair, Asia Horse did not send these to me, but whenever we fired up the PC, we got an excruciating sounding noise. Here's what it sounded like in the studio. That's the sound of three or possibly four of those fans all hitting the metal grills on the case. For whatever reason, when this specific fan is installed in the intake position behind the grills of the case, the blades are crunching on there and obviously this isn't good. We ended up just reversing the fan direction, that way they're all exhaust. Now we just have a negative pressure airflow setup, which still gets the job done, but man, this was very weird. I have no idea what causes the mismatch between these specific fans and the case, or maybe we just bought some faulty fans that stick out of the frame by a millimeter, but I definitely recommend just going with different ones to fill out this Pegasus case, which I still like. And finally, the other thing to fill out this case is the graphics card, and this is the ASRock Steel Legend OCRX 7900 GRE, and this honestly combines two of my favorite things in the GPU world right now. First, for aesthetics, I've always been a fan of the Steel Legend series, both for motherboards and GPUs because they just look so clean, but also for performance because the 7900 GRE is probably the absolute best value for 1440p gaming in 2024. 
card. This cost me 550 bucks on Amazon and it can chew through absolutely any game in 1440p, which I'm about to show you in the benchmarking section. If you watch some other benchmarking videos of the 7900 GRE versus the equally priced RTX 4070, it's honestly not even close. The 7900 GRE wins in pretty much every single game. But before we test that for ourselves, here's what the parts list is looking like. And if you copied this right now today, you'd be looking around the $1,400 mark. Like I said earlier, I was mostly interested in checking out these Asia Horse products since they sent them to me for free. But either way, at this price range, the 7700X and 7900 GRE combo is a good goal to shoot for no matter how you build around it. Oh, and before I take this build home with me, just in case you aren't following my TikToks and YouTube shorts, the stream where I built this PC was on UFD Tech's charity live stream where he was trying to raise a bunch of money for researching the rare genetic condition that his son has. While I was building, they were $1,000 away from hitting their $25,000 milestone. So I basically said that if anybody donates $1,000 before I install the graphics card, I'll bleach my hair. Sure enough, somebody took me up on that challenge within like 20 seconds and I'm a man of my word. Anything for Emma. All right, so per usual, I took the build home with me and before we get started, I did upgrade the peripheral situation just a bit. I already made a short and TikTok about this, but the mouse pad I'm now daily driving is the Artisan FX Zero and that pairs perfectly with the 26 gram Zero mouse. Whenever I play MMORPGs, I am going with the Steel Series Aerox 9 though, but everything else on the desk is the same from last time and I'll be running all of the games in 1440p. So per usual, I started with X Defiant and I put the settings at 1440p Ultra, but also turning off V-Sync. Very weird that it's defaulted to on still. But yeah, I jumped into some sniping picking up from the last benchmarking session, but honestly, I was definitely feeling a little rusty here. I haven't been playing X Defiant nearly as much as I want to, so I wasn't able to string together any impressive multi-kills this time around. I was also getting a bit worried because I noticed the CPU temperatures were getting around the mid to low 70s. Normally in gaming, that wouldn't be a big deal, but with X Defiant, the CPU is only working to around 40 to 50%, so that's kind of a high temperature for that little workload. After my washed game that I didn't even break positive on, I shut it down and fired up Cinebench 2024 and HW Monitor to double check those temps. To my surprise, the 7700X only ever bounced up to 84 degrees and it never went above that. After five to 10 minutes, it was just doing the same thing, so I consider that good to go. It seems like with this AIO, the idle and low utilization temperatures aren't amazing, but it definitely ramps up good enough to keep the 7700X perfectly cool under full load. Keep in mind, this is all done with the default fan curves. I could tweak that a bit if I wanted to, but instead, let's just move on to the next game. Here's Madden 25, and it's part of the reason why I haven't been playing X Defiant as much lately. For this, I put the settings at 1440p and high, although I definitely could get away with ultra, but I like the silky smooth frame rates. I started a Steelers franchise a few days ago, and the first thing I did before week one was trade Najee Harris straight up for Jerry Judy because the Steelers definitely need some more receivers. Judy put up some monster plays for me during this game, including a touchdown. Very happy with that trade. I also traded away Russell Wilson and some draft picks to grab Pacheco from the Chiefs. He's just so fun and fast to play with in Madden, and he came in clutch during this game as well. While he was running all over the Raiders, I did note that the GPU temperatures and utilization percentages were looking really good. However, that CPU temperature was getting up there again in the mid 80s this time. Again, I don't think it's anything to worry about since it didn't get to 90 degrees, and I know that if I tweak that fan curve and possibly reapply the thermal pace, I could get those temps down a bit more. Oh, and shout out to my boy Darnell Washington for getting a big man back shoulder touchdown at the end of this game. I was just over at his house in real life a couple of weeks ago. Check out that YouTube short if you haven't already. And finally for the last game here, I'm testing out Throne in Liberty for the first time. I see that all of my streamers are playing this right now and I'm definitely an MMORPG player that at least likes to check out all of these new games whenever they release. I put the settings for this one at 1440p and disabled any sort of upscaling. However, what's weird is that every time I relaunch the game, FSR kicks back on. Not sure why it's defaulting to that being on. I did put the preset at high settings even though it recommended Epic. Again, I prefer the smoother frame rate compared to a better image quality. So yeah, I jumped into this game completely blind and right off the bat, this wasn't what I was expecting. It gives off single player action combat vibes, I guess. I can turn into a wolf to run around faster. The movement feels a little clunky. The whole thing just didn't feel right or like a traditional MMO. It is good to see that the game was pounding the GPU as close to 100% pretty much the entire time though. And the 7900 GRE had no problem staying under 70 degrees. The negative pressure setup with no fans underneath the GPU are working perfectly fine for this build. But yeah, I got up to the tutorial boss, I think it was, defeated him with ease. And honestly, I wasn't feeling this game enough to continue, but I may come back to give it another shot at some point. So yeah, here's the rest of the games that we tested back at the office. Clearly the 7900 GRE and 7700X combination is 
is super powerful. And honestly, most of you probably don't need much more power than this unless you wanna go into 4K gaming with a higher frame rate. And per usual, we'll have a longer extended benchmarking run for this combination live on the ZTT Extras channel by the time you're watching this video. And as one more final reminder, if you want some totally free PC building help outside of just copying videos like this, head on over to zttbuildhelp.com where I have a bunch of resources that I personally use for finding the best parts. I also created build guide templates for both gaming and content creator builds that you can easily copy and paste. Be sure to let me know what you thought about this build and all of the Asia Horse products in here. Remember that links for everything are down in the description and feel free to click the video on the screen now if you missed that tiny five liter ITX build that I did a week ago.